During this time, he gained his doctorate through research and applied development of African-centred Greek work practice. Recently widowed, this event sees his return to the presentation circuit, speaking of his personal and professional experience in planning and applying leadership and high achievement strategies. Give it up for Dr. Lance Lewis. Hi there, hi there. Um, Natalie Tandy Ormus. Uh, it's not well. Okay. Right. I'd wanted to thank Natalie for slapping me across the face to start to wake me up because I've had death I've had to deal with. And for Paul, he just kicked me up the ass and took to get me in. So, I've had two people that really kind of brought me back. Yeah. Whatever. Okay, what I was going to talk about today was high achievement, how do you get achievement done? And some time back, a really called Carl George did a session. What's he talking Paul, did you bring Carl up to Manchester? Yeah, he came up years ago. Yeah, 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 it was you that one, wasn't it? Anyway, he did a thing called Accelerated Learning. And what he told us about was. Yeah. Researchers went around the world and what they did, they went to high achieving people in every field and they spent a lot of money on it but worked out, well what are the strategies and techniques, techniques that high achieving people use and then they put it, did it and put it in a formula. When I heard of this, when I sat there I went, wait a minute, I do all of that. And for, ah, so it's true. So there are strategies and techniques you can use because I use them myself. If so I look at what I did, I was in three fields sport, I became British European world champion. Academia, yeah, I got my degree, but then I went on to get a PhD. And then professionally, yeah, I was a school teacher, I was head of department, assistant head teacher, then I became a school inspector. And what I think was, so when I look at what I did, Egypt to teach leadership. Now leadership, like I said, I've not come across it in this country, but I just want to show you the booklets and the sort of areas we cover. Now, there's a methodology they have, but I added my own methodology as well to this course. Who am I? So that's the first thing the kids after we start looking at and teaching. Who am I? Do you know who you are? You can imagine how you're in front of a group of children and you're going, who am I? Now imagine this, you don't know who you are and you've got to teach kids, who am I? And you don't know who you are? 
So, remember, this is all about what we call leadership training in schools. Next one, so once we go through, who am I? Leading. So like, this is international schools. I don't know if we've been taught in the UK. Leading. That's the next we have to go through. Year 7 to 12. Then next we do teamwork. Now, academic, but also what I do as a P, from a P teacher as well, we'd make assault courses. So I'd have groups of children with assault courses, give them certain challenges, and you soon find out who are the followers, who are the leaders. What you usually do, you get a group of children and say, who's the leaders in these groups? And they'll tell you. So then, I have to put that, so right, I know that in my ear, but I need to see it. So then I put them through activities. And then it soon comes out who the leaders are, who the followers are, and whatnot. Next, we'll have to go through problem solving. So think of it, yeah, you've got a group of kids and you've got a problem. Leaders soon emerge. And not necessarily leaders will be very good at solving particular issues and problems with the group. Next, communication. Now imagine this, you're a leader and you can't communicate. Last. My, pers my personal skills profile. So, as a leadership teacher, these are the areas that I'd have to teach. And it's actually fun. Yeah, so I was brought over Egypt specifically to teach that kind of course. And as you can imagine, in Egypt, things were kind of different. Yeah? They tend to have only one type of leaders, which are generals. But they ain't stupid. They know what, certain people know what they want and what changes are needed. Yeah? Now, as far as I'm concerned, that is it, and I wish for now people to open up and ask questions and talk. That's it. So I've had a bit of a ass kicking to get myself, get me up here, yeah, because my head's been elsewhere. Right, is there any question or anything you'd like to ask me? Um, so you said that you showed Yeah. Yeah, so like. I know, like, because I've been in various jobs and trying to do, do like icebreakers to try and get everybody there. Like, people communicating and break the ice kind of thing. Yeah. What kind of um, ones did you do? Like, I know there are different types of activities. Like, I mean, you've got like, introduction. Yeah, like uh, introduction skills. Okay. So, talk. Nay, but tell them who you are, ask what you do, and then tell the next person next and pass it on around like that. Okay. Yeah? So, I do basic things like that. Yeah? But then you can make it more physical. I put, what I do is I might have like groups of six. If you don't know one another, but groups of six. But, and then, sorry, groups of six, and you then have an assault course. Yeah? I'd like, it could be quite basic. Then, the teams have to pass through the assault course, but blindfolded. So that means communication. I.e., one of them, has to stand on the outside and guide them through the assault course. Trust, because the blindfolded and communication skills. So that's just one activity. There's plenty here. Yeah? We can make it a bit more nervy, a bit more frightening, a bit more challenging. We can do, we can do all sorts. Think of the military. How do they train soldiers? Yeah, get leaders out of them, communicators. So we have to do similar sort of things, not killing guns, but tests to kind of help kids find out who and what they are, what they're actually good at, and how to help them develop. We as adults, it's like, right, okay, let's put them in a situation now where they can actually learn, actually, that bully is actually quite weak, but that child is actually a gifted leader. But the class needs to see this. Yeah? I might know it, and that child there might believe they're getting bullied in a week, but actually I know this kid's gifted. And that bully is actually really quite weak. But I've got to put it in a situation where they themselves see that. So within a team or leadership group work, sort of methodology, 
you hook Ridley tasks like a you know, like a salt, like an assault course, and then put them through it. And then it, what happens is because it's physical and not sat at a desk, because they're running around outside around the classroom, it manifests, it comes right out. They're that bully actually climbing that wall and getting it actually it's really quite a gun. And that kid who's been bullied, wow! Look at him leading the rest of the group through that course. That comes out. And I learned that. <laughs> Go on. Ah, kind of She's a speaker, you should be able to speak with Right, so if you look at now state school, what the state school they will tend not to do this sort of thing. Some of the pri a lot of the private schools don't even do this here, but quite a few do. Yeah? So to me, I'd go, well, depending on where your children are at. So if I just look at my own sons, yeah, I'd go, well, I had to independently teach them particular things and put them in situations where they're against them. Yeah, so I'd also actually sent them to a school which focused on boys. But you know, actually, their major aim was getting boys to really focus and deal with their academics. Because the new boys tended to fall slightly behind. So, yeah, so I said my son's particular to, to a school which actually specifically dealt with yeah, dealing with young males in the academics in every subject area. Do a challenge in the male. The males. Okay. Five a.m. That's because five a.m. is the time when I was getting up every morning at five a.m. I'd be training at five, meditating. Now I do a lot of tai chi at five a.m. Yeah, I didn't get up at five a.m. this morning, but I will. I'd say tomorrow probably. Yeah, I get up and do a lot of tai chi and meditation. No, that's my principle of getting up at 5 a.m. and meditating and doing my Tai Chi. That's mine, that's for me, because I've always got up at 5 a.m. since the age of 12 to become the best in the world. Yeah, so I still maintain the habit because there's a lot I still want to do. I've got to bring my wife's house out to Egypt. And there's people out there waiting for me. And there's things I want to do out there which require, you know, certain things. So I go, all right, I want this. How do I do it? Well, when I wanted to be world champion, what did I do? Oh, I did this, this, that. When I wanted to get a PhD, what did I do? I did. You get it? So it's these things are one. The same things I do. Yeah, which I've always done from 12, yeah? <laughs> okay. Motivation techniques. Mm -hmm. So academics is not their gift and skill and talent. Yeah, so I'd go, well, is, are they, is academics their gift, their skill, their talent? If it isn't academics, then find out what is their skill, what is their talent, what's their gift? Yeah? Find out what their gift is, then try and motivate Yeah? Like my gift wasn't far, I, I was outside of school. But my gift came out, and it was in the granny club. And it was as I got older, I met guides or mentors, males, men, who were around me, who helped me discover my gifts. And these t these males weren't teachers. These were man from the street. My best mate's dad was from Jamaica. 
Jamaica. Jamaica. And he was like, the real. And there was a priest, because I was always going to be a part of my history, I was going to be a priest for a short, you know, and pre during the priest to train in Catholic priest. Yeah, but when I had my time in South America, that kind of twisted my head, or made it go, I'm not going into that seminar. Yeah. Yes, it can be internally motivated or externally motivated. So I say to you, right, how we, what, what do you know about this person? How are you now going to, can you go, I know how to motivate you now because I know you that well. That's what I think of my son, I go, well, I know them pretty well. And they've achieved. However, because they're like they can throw them over, and I'm not going to show them over, and I'm behind them. <laughs> yeah, watching them. <laughs> also, making sure I knew who their friends were. So, all of them, my son's friends, I knew exactly all of them. I knew their families. Yeah? So, when it came to motivation, well, I knew what was around them, I knew who they hung out with, and how to gently motivate them. <laughs> there all the time, yeah? Can you break down the, the difference between um, the definition of want and need? Want and need? Yes. Right, dear, right. I want to go hang out with my mates, right? But I need to be with my boxing coach because I've got a fight the next, I've got a fight in a week. I need to be with him because he's going to tell me how I'm going to defend against this guy's left hook. Because every left hook this guy throws, he knocks everybody out. I need to be with my coach. I mean, mate, well, I don't, well, I could go out, but yeah, I'd want to be with him and hang out with him. And I want to, but I don't really need to. But I need to be with my coach because I got a fight next week and the guy means bad. That's why I think we're going wrong because we're getting the two of them confused. I think that's why people can't find that, 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 that push because we're getting confused between the two. want and need. You understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because when you, when you want something, yeah, 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 yeah. your mind is different from what you need. Yeah, you got, you saw a lot of people think, I want, they think, well, I need it. No, it's just one, you don't need it. You can't pump the pipe, right? But you do need this because later on, when you get older, you're going to need that to get jobs. So that totally, totally did what you say, yeah? But then it's like, we as adults, because they're going to follow us, so we've got to demonstrate it. Well, this is a want and this is a need. Yeah, two different things. Yeah, two different things. We, we, we as adults, we've got to demonstrate this to the kids. we got to show them. Otherwise, we're talking rubbish. They see us go, I want that, but I'm dealing with it. I need that, so you're going to see me over here. So. You got it. So we got to be showing them all the time. So it's in the face. And then they go, all oh, right, yeah. Some kids learn best by what they see. Hello. Hello. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to be right. um, With that, my organization came through. What adults who were around me, I had certain adults who flowed in. When I decided I'm going to be world champion, then certain adults over time began to come and go right. And I also, I'm also dyslexic, but not, I'm not extremely dyslexic, I'm there. It's an advantage, right handed, left legged in a ring that was brilliant. <laughs> yeah? And it was hard to read, but I eventually got it. But we organised. You have to, it's like, we've got organisation of the time, but we've been organised to develop the time to do what I needed to do. Well, I was in and out of care, so he said, yeah, from your parents, they're going, well, I was with his mum, but a lot of times I was in care, so was she organised? Well, you know, she, you know, she abused me, she was organised, maybe. You see what I'm saying? But, in other things, I go, well, no, we shouldn't really organise. So, organisation, me becoming organised, came more from adults around me, those positive adults. Plus, once I got over this, this dyslexic baggage with books, it couldn't stop me reading. I was like, it was hard, but I just kept doing it and doing it and doing it. And so, I started to read about fighters and people who made it. You got it? So, I'd be like, just reading, started to read, it's hard work, but I've got it, yeah? and, I'd, and, I'd, and then it's like, oh, they're organised! <laughs> Ding! 
<laughs> and so then that <laughs> got to me, I then oh, got it organised and talked over with the adults around me and they said, yeah, do that, do this, also add that in. And then just maintain it. Some young people nowadays, which I think we're all talking about, is where they, there's a level of addiction to the internet, you know, the Facebook the yeah. stuff. They're spoiled brats, because I have one of those. You know, spoiled brats who, yeah. you know, they never walk, they've never gone hungry like we yeah. did at yeah, 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 yeah. the they, They've never gone hungry, they've never had to walk down the road in the freezing cold with heavy shopping like we did when we were little. There's lots of things that they've never ever experienced. And in some ways what we've produced is some very spoiled brats that have major addictions to the internet era type stuff. Plus they eat the sugar and the cakes and all the rest of it. And what I see is, what I saw in my son, which I've been working on, he's now 21 and doing okay. But what I see is that we've got a generation of young people, and I'm generalizing this, it's not all, where they lack motivation, they don't see why they should have to do it, yeah. you know, they're spoiled because we spoiled them, they've never gone hungry. I kind of laugh with some of my friends saying, maybe I should have starved him a little bit when he was little <laughs> every now and then, so we know that well, it's right. Right. Don't, don't, sort of, don't sort of children you're talking about, I'm, not, I'm going, well, yeah, I read them in the classroom. Yeah. yeah. I read them in the classroom, yeah? <coughs> wow. <laughs> oh, oh. But there's an ex school, but I'm just gonna say, there's an ex school pupil. No, I used to go hang out in his classroom, he's too poor. So it's kind of like, it's, I go, yo, you'll have some good answers there. Go on. No, well, for, for me, I, I've got kids of my own now, but a lot of it okay. is our own fault. Like, for example, like, your kid ain't gonna see the internet access if you don't got it in your house. Yeah. Or your kid ain't gonna have an iPad unless you buy your kid an iPad. Your kid ain't gonna get an iPhone unless you buy your kid an iPhone. Thank you. So a lot of it is down to our own stuff now. It's like you now have to bleed the kids away from it. Okay. And it's like you have to now, not force, but you kids have to understand that. You have to do something. Whether it's swimming, gymnastics, football, whatever. Now as soon as your kids start doing some kind of sports, then they start understanding that they have to follow some kind of command. They have to follow rules. Understand? So the more rules you start getting into now, that's when you can start wheeling up people. Because right now, the internet is what's around them. There's no rules. Did yeah. you say that? The system. Did you say that I did not allow my two sons in the sauna? Maybe about a couple of months ago, they went, Dad, you never let them have, let us have any computers. I went, but we understand that we actually now appreciate what you did. <coughs> they weren't allowed computing TVs in their bedrooms. No way. And, yeah. And until, so when they got access to computers and TVs when they were at the mates, when they were kind of older. But in the house, no. You know, I mean, none of you them. It was as simple as that. You know, no computing that what? Computers, no. TV, no. Because I understand what's going in your mind but also just the impact it can have on you in a negative way. And they now, my sons now will tell me straight, you appreciate it. And they're big men now. They're big men, they're not like little kids, they're big men. One's been out to war in Afghanistan, the other one's was a dumb. <laughs> but anyway, it's another story. <laughs> but they say, we appreciate it, Dad, that what he did. So all I can say is, look, because some people would say, what? You didn't let them have the TVs in the bedroom? You didn't let them watch, have any computers? I'd say, yeah. No, they weren't allowed them. And they say, none. They there now say, thank you. So, you know, I mean, you might have to go to the extreme. I don't know, but I, I didn't give a damn. I see, you still, they don't care. I remember when my son was little, there was, there was a period of a few years where from probably about the age of five to about 11 or so, where I couldn't afford to have Sky, and the normal area in the house didn't work, so we just didn't have TV. Right, okay. And we only watched DVDs, so I used to buy like all the Tyler Perry stuff. So we just watched all of Tyler Perry's old stuff, you know, right. Madea, Ghost of Gems, you know, all the Madea stuff. And that was all we watched was DVDs. And when I look back, I'm going to be pleased with this. Because it meant you didn't get that, you know, that thing that TV does that I don't like, where it's the flash yeah, of images constantly. You 
know, and he, he, it allowed him to slow down a little bit. Oh. And he wasn't <laughs> So it's, it's like uh, it's not it's not just you know the TV or whatever. It's not about the electronics. It's that the, our our brain works in a different way. The people that making this uh, social media, TV, stuff like that, they know how our brain. Let's say for example, you were working hard to be a champion. It's not the, the when you working hard, but once you become a champion, that's you know the the chemical that release in your brain. That is that's dope. They give you me. Yes. That's that's when when every time they play game and they win certain things, they give them without working hard. The body's not working, but the brain don't know whether you're physically doing it or you are mentally doing it, because there's no connection. So the better for you is to get them out of this situation, to say no. Once they understand they become lazy. They don't want to do physical activity. Because the brain is already taking too much energy out of it. It happens to all of us, even my children. But sometimes you have to say no. Even adults at this time, it's the same thing. You, know? you sit down and watch TV or movie. It's the same thing. You become the actor. Without, you know, until the movie finish, you are the actor. You know? It's a psychic thing. And I always, always suggest that, especially with your males that are involved in physical activity, whatever physical activity, yeah, when the chest playing, through to rugby, not that, not that, you know what I mean? Chest which would be that the focus and you've got that, that male energy is directed. And like I say, I had to practice with my sons, so I can say, well, from experience of bringing my sons, you know, my sons, there were certain knowledge about things I had, and it was like, right, this is what I me and the mum agreed, this is what we're going to do, and all I can say is, they say now, thank you. That's all I can say, they say thank you, Dad. So that's, that's it, really. So, you know. Thank you.